According to these powerful people, Jesus came with a sword, not just words of peace. Check it out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Hey, on the line with us is our buddy Dean Obadala, the host of the Dean Obadala Show, right here on Sirius XM, 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time, channel 127. He's also a columnist with the, De with the uh, Daily Beast, his website, deanofradio.com. And of course, you can tweet him at Dean Obadala. And uh, Dean, welcome back to the program. I'm, I'm curious your thoughts on... Trump holding up a Bible in front of the church as a, as a Muslim American and as a person who I know watches very, very carefully um, this right. intersection, this ex exploitation of religion by the hard right in this country. Well, first, Tom, thanks for having me on. It's always great to chat with you. I, I think it's interesting to me that Donald Trump gassed his own people so he could have a photo op in front of a church. And I've been in the Middle East a great deal of time. I have family there. I've seen leaders in the Middle East gas their own people. We've used it as an excuse to go to war with those people. But when Donald Trump does it, and there's no doubt, the smoke canisters, pepper balls, and now they just found a tear gas canister, but it doesn't really matter. The pepper balls and smoke canisters are the same impact, the same. They're toxic, inability to breathe, tearing eyes. So he literally gasses his own people to hold the Bible up. And look, Trump has no religious beliefs whatsoever. I'm from New York and New Jersey. We've seen him. But the people around him, from his vice president to, you know, Reverend Jeffers and Franklin Graham and others, they want Christian Sharia law. They want to turn the Bible into our law. And Islamic Sharia would be turning the Quran into the basis of law. So Sharia just in Arabic just means path, like path to God. So I think I'm using it accurately when I call it Christian Sharia law. So Trump, meaningless, he's their vessel to impose the Bible as our basis for law. They want to do that, obviously, on on controlling women, on abortion, and if they could roll back marriage equality, they would, and banning birth control, they would do that. So to me, the biggest stunning part was the gassing his own people to have a photo op. In front of a church, you know, politicians use religion all the time. And again, that is something you see in the Middle East a great deal of the time, where mm -hmm. they will use Islam uh, a great deal of the time to get people around them, to surround them, and ultimately keep them in power when they shouldn't be in power anymore. And that's the big picture that we're seeing this. You know, I, I shared today again, Michael Cohen, Cohen's testimony, that line where he said, I've worked for Donald Trump, and I don't believe there will be a peaceful transition of power that he loses in 2020. I think that's increasingly more beyond, it's beyond hyperbolic today when the man just invoked the military and gassed his own people. That's where we're heading. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think that uh, all along, Trump has been showing us his hand um, in mm -hmm. small ways and large, and sometimes even trumpeting it, no pun intended. And, um, you know, we just thought, oh, you know, he's, he's just being a blowhard. No, he's not being a blowhard. There's, there's something real. By the way, uh, uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, and I, should, I, I just want to put a fine point on this, uh, Dean, you and I are both uh, hosts here on Sirius XM on, on the Progressive mm -hmm. Channel 127, Sirius XM Progress. And tomorrow... Uh, Sirius XM Progress, inspired by the protests all across the United States, and now increasingly all over the globe. Uh, tomorrow, yeah. Friday, we're going to be locking arms together in unity on this channel with uh, a call for change. It's an all-day marathon mm -hmm. broadcast beginning at 7 in the morning with Zerlina Maxwell and Jess McIntosh, followed by Stephanie Miller, me, uh, Michelangelo Cinarelli, uh, you, Dean Obadala, and John Fugelsang, and we're going to cover mm -hmm. every aspect of this stuff and uh, messaging with on-the-ground leaders and, and whatnot. And you can use the hashtag, a call for change and uh, listen all day tomorrow on Sirius XM Progress 127, which, by the way, you can listen on an app, you can listen on the Internet. Um, and Dean, to what extent do you, do you think that this might work? I mean, the, the conventional wisdom seems to be that this has backfired. But my sense of it is that the people that Trump was shouting out to, the authoritarian <laughs> Christians, the ones, the, the spare the rod, spoil the child Christians, the, the group that are very happy that, that yesterday or the day before um, uh, the Trump administration asked the Supreme Court to allow businesses to discriminate against people based on their sexual orientation, um, uh, that, that uh, you know, basically discriminate against LGBTQ people. Um, I think it's actually probably working with them. I think Franklin Graham and, and, sure. and Jerry Falwell Jr. were smiling. What do you think? Certainly, they're very happy. This, Donald Trump, because he has no core, 
is malleable. They can get him to do whatever they want by selling him. Ultimately, it's going to help you because everything with Donald Trump is what helps him personally. And that could be financially. It could be politically. It could be picking up women, whatever it is in his life. That's who he is. So in this case, yes, they're ecstatic about this guy. And would Franklin Graham and Jeffers and this group of people agree to suspend some of our democracy for them to have what they want? I think absolutely. And I think we should be aware of that. It's not it's not like they're about democracy. They're about imposing their religious beliefs as our law. The same way in the Middle East. I've been in the Middle East. Exactly the same thing that goes on there. There's not a lot of democracies in the Middle East. They're not truth theocracies, but they use religion to control people and to get support. So I think that we, we have to be – his base isn't growing, but they're – they're certainly rabid, the ones that are on board. And it's going to be, regardless of polls, Tom, we know this, it's going to be a tough election. I think we're going to win, but we have to work really, really hard. Get out everyone we know, yeah, register people. It's going to be vicious. We're talking with Dino Badala, host of the Dino Badala Show, weekdays 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Progress, Channel 127, um, you know, right here on this, uh, on this spot. And... Um, Dean, you mentioned uh, twice that you have friends and, and relatives in, in the Middle East. You've been in the Middle East. You've seen this sort of thing. Um, you're sure. far more familiar with this playbook than I am. I, I, you know, I lived in Europe for, in fact, I lived in Germany for a year. So I can tell you anything you want to know about, you know, the history of Nazism. But I, you know, the Middle East, uh, you know, I've been there. Uh, I've spent a fair amount of time there, but I, but, uh, you know, not during conflict. What is the next step? If Trump is following the Saddam Hussein playbook, for example, or the al-Sisi playbook, or, or mm -hmm. first of all, I'm curious which one you think he's most, care, most carefully following. And, and then what is the next step? We have, uh, I think we have about three minutes till we hit a hard break here, Dean. It's, I don't think there's anyone in particular. He goes with his instincts, which are authoritarian, just like Mubarak before in Egypt or Sisi now or Erdogan in Turkey, which might be the closest because that was a democracy and it's been chipping away little by little Erdogan to make himself more powerful. And people there, at least polls show and for elections, how he's done pretty well. He's had some setbacks, but he's been able to do this. I think what Donald Trump has done, he's been able to use our legal structure to achieve a lot of his goals, like declaring an emergency to fund a wall that Congress wouldn't fund. I think to me, I, I look at the part of the Constitution that allows Donald Trump to suspend habeas corpus in the time of rebellion, same thing Abraham Lincoln did, which simply would mean he could imprison his political opponents. You have no charges. You stay indefinite like a king throwing people in a dungeon. He literally has that power in our Constitution in the time of rebellion or invasion. The more protests, the more we get closer to that. Maybe he says, I'm going to suspend it and starts arresting his political opponents. It gives Bill Barr some justification to say it's based on the Constitution, and they hope they get to the Supreme Court and that Chief Justice Roberts, who's now our saving grace, and that's kind of sad, but that's the reality, might side with him. You have to hope he doesn't. But that's what I think you would see. Unleashing the military, threatening the military, and having people like Tom Cotton support it is also part of it. Using the military to suppress isn't, peaceful protests. Isn't stealing elections a big part of it? There's a lot of... They're stealing elections. They're not even elections. I mean, you have elections in Egypt where the candidate gets 95 percent. Saddam Hussein gets 95 percent. They're not real elections. One thing you have in the Middle East, that, that one thing you don't have in the Middle East, is a lot of ex-presidents walking around. And there's a reason for that. They come into power and they stay essentially until they're killed or they die in office or if they're in prison. Those are the three scenarios for most Middle Eastern presidents. So I'm not sure that's going to happen here, but the fact there are not a lot of ex-presidents means there's not a lot of peaceful transfers of power. And Donald Trump has joked from day one about staying president for life. China's done it. Mm -hmm. It's a great idea. That's not joking. That's priming. He's priming his base to get ready when he calls on them to support him to suspend the 22nd Amendment, which would not allow another third term if he somehow won in 2020. Uh, and the list goes on. Just the, the election's not fair. It's not. It's fraud. We're going to a dark place, but I think we have to be prepared for it and talk about it. You, me, Tom, everyone else. So no one's, no one's paralyzed in fear when it happens, that we're dead ready yeah. to respond.